All right, you're listening to Radicast 1980X. I'm Adam Dravian, and with me, as always, is... Jessica Saffron. We are the creators of Satan Ninja 1980X, a mega-radical 1980s-themed comic that you can read online at satanninja.com. I write the comic. And I co-write it and do all of the art. And when we're not working on the comic, we watch a shitload of stuff from the 80s. And this podcast is going to be where we discuss the stuff we're watching. Kind of review it, I guess. Yeah. Review discussions. Uh Uh-huh. And inform. Inform of all those trivial tidbits about the the movies that we watch. Yeah. This is an informational podcast. Sure. About the greatest and the worst and the mediocre, I guess, of the 80s. Yeah. All about the movies that you uh, love and or never want to see. We watch it for you. Yes. And, oh, well, you know, and the ones that you do want to watch, we research it for you. There you go. Yeah, this is a public service, basically. Yeah. We're basically saints. Patron saints of the 80s. What did... <laughs> yeah. What did we watch this time? The Black Cauldron. Yeah. A Disney film. An animated Disney film from the mid-80s that you would think more people would know of exists because... You know, it's one of the Disney animated classics. It could have been the best Disney film, but... But it wasn't. It wasn't. And we'll get to that. Yeah. Uh, there's actually a pretty interesting history with this film. I went into it with a very different mindset from Jessica because mm-hmm. this is based on a series of books written by Lloyd Alexander in the 60s. What called a cool name. Lloyd Alexander? Yeah. It sounds kind of pompous. Yeah, that, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What a cool guy, you know? It doesn't sound so much like a cool guy name as it sounds like a foppish name. Well, like, you'd yeah. have, like, a page boy haircut. Yeah. You'd well, be someone with, like, a scroll heralding a king. He might as well be Lord Alexander. Yeah? Well, I'm Lord Alexander. Well, I don't know what the guy's like, but he wrote a series of books that were kind of in the vein of Tolkien, except a little more for kids. I guess The Hobbit was for kids. Yeah, it was super for kids. Super for kids, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I read those books when I was a kid. I read The Hobbit in second grade for school. Yeah? Yeah, my grandma was the uh, was principal, it? and she didn't like my second grade teacher for some reason. I think she thought that the uh, the books he was having us read were too... Uh... That they were meant for older kids? Yeah. Okay. I guess. I don't know. He had us read Great Expectations, too. That was super boring. Yeah, that's a very strange book to read to second graders. Yeah. Oh, but we also read uh, Watership Down. That's about bunnies. I've mm-hmm. actually I've never read or seen Watership Down. I just, it's sad. That's what I've heard. <laughs> uh, when I was in second grade, I think we read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, mm. uh, part of the Chronicles of Narnia series. And I think I was in uh, seventh grade when they tried to read us the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and then they stopped after reading it uh, for one day, and I asked why. I was interested in that, and they said, well, none of the other kids seemed interested, so... We're just not going to do it. Wow. It was was a weird class. Don't most kids just not seem interested in anything? Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't get it. I guess, you know, it was one of those kind of like pseudo study hall type classes. It was a strange class. Okay. Well, anyway, I I read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe for school, and I actually wanted to read more of the series. So I went to the library, and I got the books myself, and I read the whole rest of the series. Mm. And... Once I was done, I went to the librarian at my school and I said, oh, is there more of, you know, fantasy stuff like this? Because I really liked the Chronicles of Narnia. And she recommended that I read the Chronicles of Prydain, which was the Lloyd Alexander books. What so, a nice librarian. Yeah, she actually seemed really happy. Like, I was the first kid to ever come up and, like, ask her for advice on what book to read. Aww. And knowing my school, I probably was. Aww. So I read those, and I loved the book series, and I had no idea that Disney made an animated feature based on the Chronicles of Prydain. And mm. I guess I'm not alone, because it's Disney tried to sweep it under the rug like it never existed. Yeah, I think I remember maybe in my uh, early teens or something, uh, learning about the Black Cauldron. that You know, just that it existed, and being very surprised. 
the 80s is considered kind of a dark period for Disney because mm -hmm. none of their movies... Yeah, I had heard about that. ...did as well as their competitors at the time. Like, Don Bluth started making films, yeah. Uh, yeah. which he worked for Disney first, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then he went made his own studio and started kicking Disney's ass with, yeah. uh, with Fievel, An American Tale... Yeah. Uh, the Land Before Time. Oh, gosh. Secret of Nim. My Childhood. Those are, like, all classics. Mm -hmm. Whereas Disney, uh, what did they do? The, the Fox and the Hound in the early yeah, 80s. Tim Burton did something for that. He's, like, a concept artist or something. Yeah. I, nothing too too big. Yeah, people always talk about that, though. Ooh, Tim yeah, Burton worked Tim on Burton. Fox and the Hound. Yeah. And then they did... Uh, Apparently, he worked on this film, too. They didn't use any of his designs, though. Oh. He's just... they Poor they. Timmy. <laughs> Fox and the Hound, they did The Black Cauldron, and then they did The Great Mouse Detective. Great Mouse Detective was great. I don't remember. Well, I, I do. I remember it being great well, when I was a we'll kid. We'll see it it's relatively one of my favorites. shortly, I think. Of course, then they did The Little Mermaid, and that's what really started the whole revival. Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, the first movie I ever saw in theaters, it might have been The Little Mermaid, but it, it might have been Rockadoodle. I'm not sure. Which was a Don Bluth movie? Yes, Rockadoodle was a, a Don Bluth movie. I've never seen that one. Oh, oh, let me tell you, I loved it as a kid. But, oh, yeah? Uh, I didn't love it so much when I was a teenager, but it's still, you know, it wasn't like uh, abominable or anything. You know, it had a lot of cool stuff in it. So I went into the Black Cauldron watching this uh, as a fan of the book series and so I could compare it to well I don't, I don't know how much I can say I'm a fan of the book series because I don't remember the book series all that well but I know I liked it a lot when I was a kid I have no idea if it would hold up if I were to read it now yeah it'd probably be okay sure but uh I was at least familiar with the books enough to be able to judge the movie on how well it, it adapts the material and you had no knowledge of the books at all nope I had heard of the Black Cauldron being uh, sort of uh, swept under the rug, sort of Disney movie. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I also heard that it wasn't too great, but I, you know, I didn't, I basically went into the movie having zero expectations. I could have thought of it as like a, a hidden gem or something. Uh, you know, I was hoping for that, but uh, that didn't quite end up being the case. So this movie had a really troubled production. They started pre-production for it in the 70s, and they... Do you know what year? No. Late or, 70s? I think, no, like 71. It was early in the Whoa. 70s. But that was just like really early, early pre-production trying to do character designs and stuff like that. Yeah. And they... Uh, I figured it was like big D&D &D fans, and like that wasn't early 70s or anything. I guess fantasy was like pretty big yeah, at that time. In the anyway. late sixties, like yeah. Tolkien started mm -hmm. making fantasy a big thing. So right. they had all these young animators who wanted to prove that they could kind of take the mantle over from the old guard at Disney that had made all these classics and they were really pumped to to show what they could do and they thought that the Black Cauldron or adapting the Lloyd Alexander books would be this would be a great opportunity to showcase what we can do and we're gonna make these this this fantastical masterpiece mm -hmm. and i'm gonna guess that they were big fans of the badass segment from fantasia was it something <laughs> yeah, called did. mountain thing uh i don't remember what it was called it was yeah but long. you don't talk about what the what yeah, satan at the, the top satan of the mountain se sequence. yeah so they're like man let's make let's make disney satan again i definitely thought about that while i was let's watching make it. disney badass again yeah Let's like, go back to the Bald Mountain <laughs> sequence with the demons and, and satyrs and unicorns. Though. Yes, and let me tell you that the Black Cauldron had some of the most badass sequences in You're Disney movies. getting ahead of me, though. No, no, no. I'm giving you a taste of what's to come, all right? This movie had great, great stuff in it, but it wasn't a good movie. Uh, yeah, I guess that's that sums it up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when they were making the movie, they had a lot of issues with the staff members like coming and going because they they kept butting heads with it. Uh, they hired a writer uh, to, to write the movie, then she ended up butting heads with the creative direction. And there was just over and over again. If you read about the the making of this movie, it was a lot of creative differences. That's so sad. Yeah, like repeatedly people coming and leaving the project due to creative differences. And when finally they entered real production in the early 80s, I think 81 or so. Now it's D&D &D time. Yeah, now it was D&D &D time and, and Conan had come out and, you know, Conan fantasy. Conan came out? Huh? 
What do you mean Conan came out? Oh, the movie. Oh, shit. I was thinking like uh, the stories. Like, what are you talking about? Conan was a thing forever. <laughs> All right. Yes, obviously Arnold Conan, the one that every everybody knows of. Yeah. So Conan came out and fantasy was like, oh, man, this is this is hot. Sorry, uh, you didn't specify that it was Conan, you know? Yeah, except Robert E. Howard pronounced it Conan, so... All right. I was going right. with the legitimate original way. Speaking of pronunciations, this uh, Black Cauldron movie is based on... Uh, the, well, the book series was based on Welsh mythology, so there's a lot of weird Welsh names. Oh. Uh, like, the princess in this movie, her name was uh, Ilanwi. Yeah, that's not that crazy. So, what's the Black Cauldron about? It's about a black cauldron, I guess. Well, okay, yeah, the black cauldron's this this evil magical device that if you throw a body magical into cauldron. it, magical cauldron. Yeah, okay, magical cauldron. If you throw a body into it, it comes out as a zombie. It's pretty cool. Pretty but sweet. What kind of a name is the black cauldron? A cool one. No, because aren't cauldrons generally black? It's like I don't know. it's like the yellow pencil. No, it's the, not. A black the cauldron. The silver fork. Black cauldron automatically uh, conjures images of witches, which are evil, right? You could just say cauldron. No! They could just call the it cauldron. cauldron. No, yeah. the black cauldron. It sounds so much cooler. It's just unnecessary, because no. I've never seen a cauldron that was not black. Who cares? I bet you there are cauldrons that aren't black. I bet. You want to bet? No, because there probably are cauldrons <laughs> that aren't black. There's yeah. probably gray cauldrons. Sure. Maybe there's a red cauldron somewhere. They could have called it Steel Cauldron, but then it would have been a metal band. Yeah. Well, this is, the movie is kind of metal. And it was super lame, too, at the same time. It was, yeah. Yeah. So it's about this evil dude who's like a necromancer type guy. He wants to find this black cauldron so we can have an army of the dead and take over the land. It's and a fantasy, it, like, Dark Ages movie. He looks like Skeletor. He's a Skeletor-looking man. Yeah, he looks a bit like Skeletor and uh, Mumra and a lot of those 80s Yeah, they like, were just like, villains. hey, what's cool right now? This guy. Yeah, another Mordlich guy. Yeah, good for us. Yeah. And the hero of the story is an assistant pig keeper, Tauren, who... He looks kind of like the way I draw Eddie. Yeah. Sometimes. You thought he looked a bit like Peter Pan in the movie. Oh, the way he the way he moved, the way he was animated, it kind of reminded me of Peter Pan. And, so, and his his hair was a similar color. Not quite the same though. So this assistant pig keeper, he has the pig that he keeps is like a magic pig that can tell the future or see distant places or whatever. It's a magic pig. Uh, yeah, magic it, pig. So magic pig, she runs away. Pig Keeper Boy needs to go after her. He ends up getting into an adventure. Uh, meets this stupid little uh, furry guy. It's He looks like... He's like a cross between... It's like if Gollum and Donald Duck fucked each other and uh, gave birth mm. to a dog. It gave birth to a dog. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. He it would be Gurgi. He, the Gergi. stupid little Fucking furry creature. Gergi. No, he just, he looks like Gollum mixed with an old guy we used to work with. But he's, he, well, he doesn't look like Gollum. He's talked like Gollum. He talked exactly like Gollum. As soon as he opened his mouth, I was like, Gollum and Donald hey, Duck. Adam, this thing sounds exactly like Gollum. Yeah, because he talks about munchies and crunchies and, uh... No, just his voice, too. It, the, uh, and everything he said just sounded very Gollum like. Why do you keep latching on to Gollum but not acknowledge the Donald Duckness? Because he's oh, no, very yeah, Donald yeah, yeah, Duck. Yeah. His, his voice is pretty Donald Duck like. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's Gollum mixed with Donald Duck. Okay, I admit no, the voice very much. Th the bottom line is he was annoying. Yeah. Well, no, his, his look, though. His look. He looked is, like a dog. He looked like, like a Like a humanoid dog, dog with that was a foot tall. Hair and a mustache like a dude we used to work with. Okay, because everybody cares like. that he looks like a guy we used you to work care. with that these people don't know and will some never meet in their dude. life. Okay, no, the point is he looked like some old dude mixed with a dog. Like like an old dude fucked a dog and made an old dude can dog the, baby puppy. Can the and old then dude it grew be Gollum? And uh, turned and into the, Gollum. Can the dog be Donald Duck? Gollum Donald Duck, and that's what this thing is, and I hated it. Yeah, it was it was obnoxious. Uh, it tries to steal the dude's apple. I and wanted then, it to be just Gollum. That would have made me happy. 
but it, it basically was no it, and then it got all servile and stuff because he took the apple from it and then it wanted to risk its life to help him. i don't know i don't like, know this, why it the character a master was weird. for some reason i don't understand why it just should have not <laughs> yeah and in the books that creature was like a man-sized creature it wasn't like this one foot tall dog old, golem old man puppy yeah golem. old man puppy speaking of old men there was uh one of the characters in this movie was a bard that they turned into an old man though in the books he was like a young a younger guy and they made i don't know why they disney was like you know kids really like old men we need to like age up this character and turn him into an old guy with a pot belly i think that will appeal to the kid demographic <laughs> Whatever. It didn't, it didn't specify that he wasn't an old man in the books. I, no, I did. You, you, I think you told me that he had yellow hair or something. And you he know, had spiky yellow hair, like Cloud. Spiky yellow yeah. hair, like Cloud. Well, I don't Cloud know. It was from Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, th- doesn't that appeal to you? No. <laughs> it's like your favorite game of all time, right? No. This is my favorite game when I was nine, and I was amazed by it because it was, you know... You, you were the generation where it was, like, my first RPG. Yes, I remember, you know? I was ordering PlayStation Underground, and they asked me what genres of game I liked, and RPG was one of them. They I, asked you? Yeah, in, a, you know, like, one of those subscription Surveys. survey things. Okay. And I was like, Mom, what's an RPG? And she said, oh, I like that Final Fantasy game that you play. I said, oh, okay. Your mom taught you what an RPG yes, is. Yes, she did. Wow. And then she she told me about Dungeons and Dragons too, and how uh, kids used to uh, play that game in the sewers and die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what they did. Yep. That's what this movie's about. <laughs> yeah, it's about uh, going into sewers and playing D and D. No. So Pig Boy gets captured by the evil forces, and then Pig he's Boy. rescued by a princess who is. The forgotten Disney princess. Because Disney doesn't really acknowledge this movie. That's so sad. Yeah. I bet so much work went into this. Yeah, oh, it was in production forever. So yeah, a shitload of work went into this. And actually, when they showed the rough cut of the movie to the first test screening, they, during the climatic scene at the end, the dead start to come back to life. The bad guy's using the cauldron to resurrect all these corpses that are... I guess he just left these corpses (laughs) hanging out in his fort for I don't know how long. They were just... Pretty cool. They're just piles of corpses. Dude, what do you do with corpses? You put them in You keep them in your throat room? Uh, Like, what if he had catacombs? To put them in, but I don't know. They were in catacombs. They it were in his been. like. He took them out of his catacombs to put them in his throne room to put them in the cauldron, right? Uh, no, I think like early on in the movie, before he has even knows that where the cauldron is. Oh, he's prepping for the cauldron. Okay. He knows he's gonna find it sometime soon. So eventually, these the dead come to life. And it's super it's awesome. Way awesome. That was way too scary for kids. Oh, and kids started yeah. crying, and the parents were taken out of the theater, and there was this mass exodus <laughs> from the theater, and angry parents, and they're like, shit, what are we going to do? We, we created a horror. Yeah, well, we, we and watched... And we're Disney. We're not supposed to create <laughs> horrors. We watched some, like, some of the very few deleted scenes that are available to watch of this movie. More, more like deleted frames. Yeah, they're horrific. I am. I would have been so happy if this was in the movie, but like I could totally understand kids crying about it because it's so yeah. Think uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, oh my god! N- face melting stuff. It was almost on that level. Yeah, it's just like people like boils erupting and then their flesh melting off of their skeletons and then just becoming skeletons. It was pretty rad. Pretty metal. Super metal. And there were a lot of great background uh, images throughout the film. Great background paintings. And the animation was great. Like, every, like yeah. the production quality was, was really good. Yeah, there, there were parts that I thought were fucking great. Amazing. Super yeah. great. Mostly to do with the main bad guy and his corpsey army. And, you know, the rest of it was pretty good, too. It was great. I mean, it was, a lot of it was great. But, god damn. Damn it! There were so many expressions from the characters that just like made me angry, and, like on sight. Just like, oh god, just stop making that face. Just stop it. Just yeah. stop. Stop. <laughs> yeah, most of the characters were pretty insufferable. Like there, <laughs> yeah, there weren't. There wasn't like a character that I really enjoyed in this movie, like at all. It's like there were just different gradations of my hatred for them. <laughs> 
Uh, I don't know. I think the princess was probably was the least annoying. I was gonna say the the princess was okay. So this movie there. It was a lot of firsts for Disney. This was the first movie to receive a PG rating, and it would have received a PG-13 rating before they made cuts to some of the more horrific parts of the movie. Boo! Yeah, boo. Boo! And it's also the first Disney animated classic to not have any songs in it, which I didn't even realize that, but that's awesome. Yeah. Fuck songs. (laughs) Yeah, fuck songs. Now, even when I was a kid, I know they, they say, like, oh, well, the kids like the songs. Uh, it's for the kids. But I hated the songs when I was a kid. I liked some of the songs, but some songs made me, like, cringe when like I was a kid. Like the princess songs? Anytime a princess Every princess singing. song, probably, yeah. What a shitty girl. Oh, thanks. No, like, anytime a song would happen, and I would just, like, I'd start playing with my toys or zone out until the song was uh, over. And I, I just, I hated that. I hated the, the stupid songs. Yeah. Like, I think Aladdin... Might have been the first Disney film where I was like, oh, this song's kind of catchy, I guess. Sure. I don't hate it. Yeah. I don't know. There's the Beauty and the Beast. It has some fun songs, I guess. Eh, I, I don't know. I guess so. That, that Candleman. Candleman sang some songs. Like you don't know his name. L- Lemire? Ah! I think. Busted. <laughs> I haven't seen Beauty and the Beast in many a year. No, I saw it in theater, and I don't know if you've seen it since. Yeah, I could, most for the most part, I could do without the songs. Don't care about the songs. Sure, and this yeah. movie didn't have any. Actually, I think it had one song, or rather, originally, it was supposed to have one song, and that would have been in the sequence where they wander into the land of the fairy folk. Which, in the book series, the fairy folk were like these kind of short dwarf guys, hmm. but in the movie, they turned them into little tinkerbells. Yeah. And they were really obnoxious, like the, all those little They're kids. I hated their voices, their little girl voices. <sighs> Ah, yeah. most of that sequence was cut, and I think there was a song there, and I can't imagine how fucking obnoxious that song would be with these little fairy people singing that. Oh, what it would have been terrible. What if it was terrible. great? No, it would have been awful. What if they wrote a smash hit? No. What if they? What if Depeche Mode made it? You like them? <laughs> yeah. What? I don't, what if it was a super cool, I don't think Depeche dark, Mode would be a good like, match for really the fairy dark, folk people. Really dark, dark, black cauldron Depeche Mode song? That they say, the <laughs> Why Depeche thing? Mode? Why? Because you love Depeche Mode. I don't know. D- they Morrissey? I... Morrissey sang a fairy song. You'd love that. Yeah, Morrissey would sing a fairy song. Yeah. There you go. It's probably a Morrissey song. Okay. Yep. <laughs> anyway, what were you saying? I don't know. They okay. sang a song. It was Morrissey. No, th- I don't know what the song was. I don't know <laughs> if it was Morrissey. It wasn't Morrissey. <laughs> Morrissey did not sing a Disney movie song. <laughs> okay. All right, fine. Well, uh, anyway, continue past the song. It was also the very first Disney animated movie to feature uh, computer-generated effects. Whoa! So there's that. What a first. Crazy. Yeah. So, first animated movie. So not, like, so that doesn't count Tron, then? Yeah. Okay. That's why Tron doesn't count. I see. Yeah. So, so I think the the cauldron, the black cauldron, some of that stuff with CG, and uh, huh. I don't know. They, they made a did cauldron some stuff with bubbles. That was CG. Bubbles. Oh. oh. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> so this movie came out in 1985, and it just didn't do very well. Now, what time did uh, the whole satanic panic D&D is evil thing start to happen? Well, that was in its peak probably by the mid-80s. Oh, my gosh. So, oh, worst yeah, time. When they, started, when they entered production for this movie full steam in the early 80s, fantasy was, like, at an all-time high. Mm. And D&D was this breakout hit. But by the time they finished the movie and were ready to release it to theaters, the whole satanic panic hubbub had occurred with D&D, and then this movie happened to have some really, like, evil, uh, <laughs> violent scenes in it, like, scary scenes. Coolest scenes. Yeah, the coolest shit that Disney had done since the Fantasia sequence with Satan. <laughs> yeah. And parents just, uh, weren't bringing their kids to see this. I guess they weren't happy with, <laughs> with dark Disney. Yeah, parents were like, this is too cool! <laughs> but, the, the, the movie, it, it, it 
tips back and forth between really awesome sequences and awesome art and like you know cool shit and then the most stupid inane sacker and shit that it just makes you want to tear your eyeballs out i hated it i hated all the sacred shit it was so bad like you know i wanted to like this movie I wanted to like it. I even wanted to like Alanwi. She was like the most saccharine character ever, but I kind of liked that. Like for some reason, she was just she was cute, you know. And she, they she actually, rescued the she rescued the character, the main character. Her uh, design was based on Aurora from Sleeping Beauty. She looked very she Aurora look, like, yeah, yes. a lot like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, she was very very sweet. And, and I would I say Aurora is probably the hottest of the Disney princesses. Well, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Who's the hottest Disney dude? Uh, is that what they call know. him? Is that their official name, Disney dudes? The Disney dudes. How come you don't see like the Disney princes? You do. Like, I don't see all over like, Disney. Art. It's terrible. Really? Yeah. The Disney princes uh, gender swaps and oh, stuff. Oh yeah, I'm sure that's out there. I'm Disney pretty princes sure I've seen that. fat versions. Yes, I'm pretty sure I've seen that. Disney uh, princes. Everything, trans... everything that's ever been done has been done before. Especially on DVD. But they don't... Okay, Disney doesn't market the Disney princes like they do the Disney princesses. No, because they're barely characters most of the time, except maybe uh, Aladdin. Yeah. I don't know. Disney princes are not great. They're usually whatever. Yeah. And your favorite one's Beast. Because he was a character. Like a real character. Because he was an X-Man. Sure. Yeah, because he was an X Man. No, because yeah. he like was a real main character. He wasn't just like some MacGuffin or something. Because you like animalistic men. He was a dick. I just love dick men. I guess. Okay, that's a good quote. Um, so th- when this movie came out in '85, it didn't do well in theaters. In fact, it was beat by the Care Bears movie. Huh. And the Care Bears movie was made by like a way smaller studio. Wait than a Disney. minute, the Care Bears movie. So that was movie... really embarrassing for Disney. What? The Care Bears movie had evil shit too. Yeah. Didn't it? I think so. It had yeah. an evil book. Evil book. And so it's not the evil fault. The evil's fault. I don't. I don't know. I don't know why people didn't go see this movie. Is is it just because like they didn't have a taste for fantasy at the time? Is it because they just heard bad reviews? I don't oh, well, know. Okay. Televangelists the, maybe. Te- maybe televangelists told them not to see it. The Care Bears had some dark stuff in it, but not as like super evil brutal dark like the dark <laughs> the, the black cauldron had and it had fucking care bears to balance it out yeah but this had like way saccharine crazy yeah no it had some saccharine it. stuff it had some stupid fairies and a little uh, doggy guy it had a very nice princess but it didn't have care bears yeah you're right who just want to care yeah care bears are pretty nice they want to just help people and spread love there was no no yeah, one in this movie just wanted to spread movie. love with by shooting things out of their stomach at people. I'm gonna cool. blast you in the face with my love. That's cool. I love doing that. I can't wait to see the Care Bears movie. I don't know if I've ever seen the full like the first Care Bears movie. I remember the second one when I was a kid with the the evil redheaded kid. Which one had the Care Bear cousins? Were they introduced in the first movie? I don't know. I remember the Care Bear cousins very well though from the show. I think. Right. Well, we're, we're going to be watching... I actually just added the uh, the Care Bears movie to our Netflix queue. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so we'll be watching that shortly. All right. Yeah, that was a huge cartoon from my childhood. That's a big big piece of my childhood that I don't remember very well. What, the Care Bears? Yeah. Yeah, like I remember watching it all Wasn't the time. Wasn't that like after your... Or before your time? You know, they that... syndication. It was yeah. on TV all the time. Okay. So out of all these 80s properties, why was the Care Bears the one that you watched? I don't know. It was on TV. Like, you didn't watch Transformers. You didn't watch G.I. Joe. You didn't watch He-Man. No you didn't watch My Little either. Pony. You know why I didn't watch Ninja Turtles? Because uh, uh, the Little Shop of Horrors cartoon was on at the same time on a different channel. You chose wrong. Well, I'm sure my parents did it. My dad did it. I blame my dad. Yeah. He was probably like, oh, Little Shop of Horrors cartoon, this is great. And I loved it. I remember having a very heated argument with my dad uh, when I was probably three or something about uh, whether the um, the main character's name was Seymour or Little Shop of Horrors. <laughs> I, I like I remember like screaming at my dad that the, the main character's name was Little Shop of Horrors. <laughs> Oh, you were the one who thought that. Your dad was the one who was trying to argue that <laughs> no. his name was Little Shop of Horrors? No, no, no. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> oh man, no, oh, that was a terrible show. Did you apologize to him? Later I should. On? I should do that. You should definitely... Maybe next year for Father's Day, I'll do that. Yeah. yeah. Make an I'm sorry card. I'll make an apology card for my papa about that yeah. movie. Draw I mean, Seymour the... and say sorry, my name. Show. Have Seymour on it and have him say my name is not Little Shop of Horrors. <laughs> he probably doesn't even remember it. I don't know. I'll, I'll ask him and make sure. No, he probably tosses and turns at night thinking about <laughs> oh, Little Shop of Horrors. Seymour. Oh, my God. Okay, so Black Cauldron ratings. Satan Factor. Oh, it seemed uh, pretty satanic, I think. Yeah, we have a dude with a skull face and red glowing eyes, and he surrounds himself with piles of corpses, and he's in this dark tower, and he just wants to find a magic cauldron that can bring the corpses to life so he can have an army of undead, I guess, to rule the land with. Does it even say what his goal is? I think it's just to... Maybe it's to kill everything. Yeah, and just add to his pile of army corpses, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, if I were like a hyper-Christian mommy that watched televangelists in the 80s, I would probably consider this the most satanic thing I've ever seen. Especially since it came from Disney. So Yeah, I go into this theater thinking, Oh, my children are going to love this. I grew up on Disney. Oh, man, this is going to be great. That mom sounds terrible. Just, just that voice. Oh, you know, I'm just, I'm gonna bring my children to a Disney movie. That's gonna be great. I grew up on Disney movies. Is that the mom from Bobby's World? Yeah. That's a 90s mom. Sorry. They probably, some moms in the Midwest probably talk she like that. She existed in the 80s. Sure. She, uh, was, she was alive. Yeah. Bobby wasn't. No. But his mom was out there. Yeah, yeah. Maybe she wasn't sounding like that because she wasn't a mom yet. Oh, no, she was a oh, mom. He had an older brother. Yeah. Mm. yeah. He go. had, like, a rat tail, I think. Yeah, He's all right. cool. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So Satan Factor was actually surprisingly high for a Disney film, especially. Even even for a non-Disney film, I mean, there's quite quite the Satan Factor going on in, in this movie. Seems pretty satanic. Yeah. Ninja Factor. Yeah, not so high in the Ninja Factor. There's mm-hmm. some sword swinging. There's a magical sword that's kind of lightsaber-like. It's not like ninja-like at all. No, not not much ninja stuff going on. I guess no. there's a little bit of sneaking around, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boob Factor. Uh, oh, man. The boobs in this movie. Whoa, whoa. Don't get people excited now. Oh, come on. They're huge. They, They're very They round, were huge. Round boobs. Boobs. And they were on boobies. huge women. Yeah, so? Just... They were huge boobs. And, uh, no, I was very surprised to see in a Disney movie that uh, one of the characters was turned into a frog and yeah. was bounced around inside of the cleavage of a witch, like the gigantic cleavage of a witch, just bouncing between these boobs, just spelunking through them. And uh, feeling every crevice that it, that there was to feel, which is like one, I guess, or two. But in, in a set of breaths. because she was a big witch, it's played for laughs instead of oh, like being like, a, oh, this isn't like a sexy thing. Because if it was sexy, then Disney would not put it in their movie. But they were very springy. They were very springy big women with big boobies. One of them had big boobs. I thought, I thought One of the witches two... had big boobs, oh, and then no, there no, was no, a no, dancer. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about two women in the movie. Yeah, there was a dancer in a pub, or I don't. Was that a pub, or was that just like the barracks for the evil? Uh, I don't know. Tower? There were bad guys in it. Though. Yeah, there were a bunch of bad guys in it, and there was a uh, boobs. Yeah, there was a dancing lady. Yep, dancing booby lady. Yep. There are boobs in this movie. Yeah, the there, there were boobs in this movie. They existed. They were there. So there's that. Yeah. They weren't sexy boobs, but they... It depends on it, okay. what your taste is. Depending on what you're into, they could be sexy boobs. Yeah. So the boob factor is that uh, there were boobs in it. There are definitely boobs in this. Not nipples. They weren't boobs that were on babes. They were... Depending on your taste. Depending on babes. your taste. Sure. Okay. 80s factor... Uh, well, it's a fantasy film, but it's... Yeah. Fantasy was big in it the 80s. It had, like, a Skeletor guy in it. It had a Skeletor, warlocky guy. Yeah. 
lich guy. A lich guy. Yeah, he even had the red, the red glowing eyes of a lich. Uh, a lot of the movie looked like a lot of the background art and stuff looks like it could have gone in a heavy metal album cover. Yeah. So I, I'd say it's it's decent on the '80s factor if you're just thinking of the fantasy of you know fantasy '80s. Mm-hmm. So pretty good yeah. there. Overall fantasy rating, metal. You know. I would give it two out of five. Two. Yep. Yes. Uh, Wholeheartedly agree. It wasn't a good movie. Terrible movie. Yeah, uh, the characters like were annoying. Super the st- annoying. The story was just like, uh, I don't know. It, it didn't yeah. do a great job at adapting the books whatsoever. In fact, uh, they took a, lo- a lot of elements from the first two books of the Chronicles of Perdane series, and they kind of mashed them together and then made up their own shit. And they changed the characters, a lot of them, so that they were unrecognizable. Yeah, that's sad. And, yeah, so if you go into it as a fan of the books, you're going to be very disappointed. I didn't even remember the books that well because it's been so long since I read them, but I was still <laughs> disappointed, and, and I was able to recognize all these extreme changes they made. And why do they got to do that? Why do they got to make extreme changes? Why can't they just be like, all right, well, we got to change this little thing because it's a movie or something. If you just want to watch the movie for its visuals, then that's worth doing. Sure. Uh, at yes. least there aren't any obnoxious songs. Yeah. It's it's not a very long movie, so I guess there's that. Yeah. It, it kind of falls into that family of dark fantasy movies targeted at kids that came out in the 80s, uh, like The Dark Crystal, and, you know, there's The Black Cauldron. Yeah. And A Secret of Nim. There's a lot of yeah, there were a lot dark. of dark children's films yeah. in the in the eighties. Pretty cool. So many of them didn't do well though, and I don't know why they like kept making them. But I guess I'm glad that they did. Yeah, like the Dark Crystal didn't do that well, and then the Jim no. Henson Company were like, "Well, let's try again. Only we'll make we'll we'll throw some live action actors in it." And then they mm. did the Labyrinth, which also just bombed. Though it became a, though it became a cult classic later on. But at the time, in the 80s, that just did not do well. I loved Labyrinth when I was a kid. That was one of my favorite yeah. fantasy films from the 80s. Yeah. Would you say that The NeverEnding Story was pretty dark? Yeah. NeverEnding Story was dark. Yeah, that, that, that giant wolf creature that hunts him, uh, Trey down. He was really... There were a lot sc- of dark things in that movie. He was extremely scary to me when I was a kid. And then, of course, there's the infamous Swamp of Sorrow scene with Atreyu's horse, which is a total fucking bummer. Yeah, tons of dark kids' movies in the 80s. So The Black Cauldron was actually the most expensive animated film ever made at the time that it came out. And since it just didn't do well and it was a big embarrassment for Disney, they just decided to pretend it didn't exist. They didn't release it to home media until the late 90s. They just kind of kept it locked away. And uh-huh. yeah, so Princess uh, Alanwi, 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 Princess Alanwi, she is excluded from all the Disney princess stuff. Aww. Yeah, poor girl. Hmm. Yeah, and if you go to Disneyland to this day, you cannot go there and find a mascot dressed up as the Horned King. <sighs> like that's tragic. If I have a child, that's all I want to do is bring my child to Disney World so they can go and hug the Horned King. And now that will never happen because Disney won't acknowledge or promote the Black Cauldron. I keep wanting to call it the Dark Cauldron. At least that would be... I guess they're they're all dark, too. Shit. Very dark movie. So uh, I've read that Disney's actually thinking about doing live-action adaptations of the Chronicles of Perdane series. Really? Yeah, and I could see that, like... Oh, there's, there's, a, there's a guy crawling. Oh! <laughs> I love him. There's a millipede crawling across the park. I want to grab him. I want to grab him. Jessica's left the recording. Bye. What are you doing? I could, I could grab him. Okay, we're back. Uh, what were we talking about? Oh yeah. So I've read that Disney's actually thinking about making a series of live action movies based on the Chronicles of Perdane series. And I guess I could see that kind of working if they go, like, Pirates of the Caribbean had some dark stuff and it was skeletons and shit like that. So yeah. they probably want to get on that, like, big time Harry Potter money. Mm-hmm. So if they can get another franchise and make that work. But who knows? I mean, it took them forever to make the last one to end up being shitty. So What, the last Pirates of the Caribbean? No, it took them what? forever to make the, the Black Cauldron. 
and it was oh. just a waste of that franchise. That was forever ago. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's all different people now. Yep, totally different people. And I guess that's the end of the episode. If you have any questions or comments, you can contact us by going to SatanNinja.com. We have videos, and of course we have our super awesome comic that you can read there for free, and a whole bunch of shit. It's super cool. And uh, I guess uh, until next time, bye. Bye!